Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, whatever time of the day you are joining us. This is the Tulsa World Scene Podcast. Uh, I am here with my colleague, the lovely and talented Jimmy Trammell. Uh, our summer intern, uh, Lydia Fletcher, is on assignment, as they say. Um, the, the biggest uh, pop culture news, I think, of the last week was um, uh, that there was a screening in... Uh, in Oklahoma of the movie Killers of the Flower Moon. Um, neither Jimmy and I were invited to attend, but Jimmy was able to talk to some people who did, and and you've got some of their reactions. Yeah, we'll have that in the Sunday's Tulsa World and print. It could go live before that on the web, but uh, it was an Osage Nation only screening of the film. You know, they uh, felt there should be a special screening for the Osage, since obviously the events of the movie uh, were, were very tragic for the Osage. And also some people who were uh, involved with the movie in some way, but not necessarily Osage, were invited to the screening. It happened at the South Roads 20, on, uh, not far from where you live. Uh, you could have snuck over and watched the movie. I don't know. <laughs> well, the, where I used to live, I think, is the way, <laughs> the way to phrase it. But anyway, yeah. But... Uh, uh, to, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Well, not wanting to give everything away, but uh, what was the general reaction to to the film? Well, and uh, understand that that this screening was, if you want full context, it was the Osage only. It wasn't like going to see Top Gun with your friends on a Saturday night. This was sitting with people whose relatives were essentially murdered for oil money. You know, back in the 1920s. So. Uh, you know, when the lights went dim, it wasn't your usual movie experience. It was uh, very emotional. Uh, I asked some if it was hard to watch. They didn't want to go uh, quite that far, but they said there was some, obviously it's a very important topic and, and a story that needs to be told. And Absolutely. they're glad the story is being told. And there were some some light moments in there to break up the darkness. Okay. All right. I'm just curious, I... I it's a, it's I, I I have read the book and it's a dense and rich book. How how much of a movie is this? Well, it's three hours and twenty six minutes, uh, so it's uh, you know unusually long for a movie. I guess not really anymore since most movies are long, but uh, you don't want to put a limit on a movie like that because there's it's a hundred year old story to tell, you know. So I mean, how do you do that in in two, three, four hours? They found a way to do it. And I think uh, from what I read, the way they did it was to make the backbone of the movie the uh, relationship between Ernest Burkhart, who was a Caucasian, and Molly Bar Burkhart, who was an Osage and whose family had head rights. Well, yeah, I know that they had – the book is is as much about the formation of the FBI – or not maybe not the formation, but the um, – putting the FBI kind of on, 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 on the map as a law enforcement agency. Um, and that, uh, yeah, like you, I've read that that uh, tact was altered to put the focus more on the Osage people uh, and, and the families that were uh, targeted by these, you know, rapacious people. Mm -hmm. um, and that's 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 a, and and it's a complicated it's a complicated story, um, and and you know, because the crimes, the financial crimes done. I mean, the there were many crimes committed against the Osage people as a cause of this, sure, but the sure. financial the financial crimes are uh, so arcane. The the, the 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 chicanery that they did in order to work this out you know it it's it can be kind of mind-numbing and so that's one reason probably why they got away with it for as long as they did if they hadn't started you know killing people they might have gotten away with it for a, much longer but well and what you suggested about the birth of the fbi it is of course part of the book but that was one of the concerns the osage had when they first met with uh, the filmmaking team is this going to be about, about the fbi is it going to be about the osage and uh, to a person, everyone I've talked to said Martin Scorsese 
uh, 100% did right by the Osage people in telling this story. That is good to hear. That is very good to hear. So, well, um, remind us again when when it's going to be available for um, wide release. October 6th and limited release. Uh, you would hope that Oklahoma would be uh, in that limited release group since it was filmed here. And then two weeks later, widespread release, October 20th. Okay. All right. So a couple of months still uh, till, till that happens. And I know that uh, the Tulsa world is working on a, um, a very comprehensive special section uh, all about the, uh, not just the, the, the making of the film, but the, all the history behind it. So uh, that's something to look forward to probably in September. Is that when that's supposed to all come come down? So, all right. Well, uh, what else have we got? Well, another bit, bit, bit of news, Oklahoma movie TV related, was that uh, uh, Sterling Harjo announced that the season of Reservation Dogs that starts August 2nd, I believe, uh, is going to be the last. Um, it'll be uh, three seasons and out. Um, and you've got, a, I think you've got something on reservation dogs also coming up this weekend. Yeah. You know, and I was on vacation when that uh, announcement popped and I believe you handled that story. And I didn't realize until I read the fine print that even though it's the end of reservation dogs, it may not be the end of the story for, uh, the four kids, Bear and Laura, Danan, Willie, Jack and Cheese, and that they may pop up in other projects going forward. Uh, right. I don't want to say uh, Kevin Smith is Sterling Harjo or Sterling Harjo is Kevin Smith, but in the Kevin Smith film universe, you have, you know, Jay and Silent Bob and these characters pop up all over the place in his world. So I would hope for a continuation of those characters, and I'm sure many Oklahomans do too, because man, uh, I just can't underestimate how much uh, many Oklahomans just love this television series uh, they love it way more than the emmys which snubbed them today but uh um i just can't wait for the third season i, I know many of my friends feel the same way yeah okay and uh who, who, you you you're, you're interviewing somebody about reservation dogs this week so one of the recurring characters is uh uh i can't pronounce the last name i just i can i know maddie maddie Carter Ropel is the kid at the salvage yard who kind of is the sentry for Kenny Boy uh, in the salvage yard in Reservation Dogs. And uh, he is coming to Tulsa for a Comic-Con the first weekend in September. So if you want to see, uh, if you want to get an autograph or have a meet and greet with a Reservation Dogs actor, he will be here, OklahomaComicCon.com. And we'll have a story about that, I think, Sunday. Okay. All right. Well, we also have coming up... Uh... Uh, on the uh, on, on on the on the food side of things, uh, we finally were able to get into uh, Franco's Pizza and Trattoria down in Broken Arrow. Um, authentic um, Southern Italian uh, food, uh, and uh, we have a review of that uh, in Wednesday's Tulsa World. We also managed to land a table. Um, reservations are definitely required. If you want to go to uh, Fix and Soul Kitchen, uh, which uh, opened just about a month ago in uh, in, in downtown Tulsa, um, that uh, that's a review that, 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 that'll be coming pretty soon, but I'll, I'll, I'll put it this way. Uh, they do okra in a way I've never seen before, and it's really, really good. So you tease me. Just, I'm an okra fan, you know. I know, I know. It's 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 well, I'll just put it this way. They char it. Hmm. And it's 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 really, really good. And if you are a fan of collard greens, these may be some of the best you've ever had. Hmm. So the sides are really amazing. And uh and we tried a couple of the entrees, and we'll get all that in a future uh issue of the uh Tulsa World newspaper available at uh, fine newsstands everywhere and online at TulsaWorld.com. Uh, we'll also have an interview with uh, Hunter Stone Gamble, a local uh, chef and restaurant owner who has, uh, on the uh, 15th, will 
officially opened uh, Gamble's Jewish Deli uh, at the corner of 11th and Lewis, uh, right by Mother Road Market, right by the newly opened uh, Visit Tulsa Visitor Center, which is very Route 66 oriented. So all those things will be coming up in, in your local Tulsa world. I know that uh, our intern Lydia has a lot of things going on. So we'll give you lots of stuff to read about in the worlds of culture, both high and low. Well, uh, that will wrap us up for this day. Uh, we want to thank you for taking the time to be with us, and we wish you a pleasant tomorrow. Behave. <laughs>